the uh, help committee will come to to come to order. Today we're reviewing the nomination of Dr. Robert Califf to serve as Commissioner of Food and Drugs. Dr. Califf, welcome. Congratulations on your nomination. Welcome to you and to your family members. We're glad they have been able to come up, some of them from Columbia, South Carolina, and I enjoyed having the opportunity to meet with you uh, in, in, in my office. If you're confirmed to lead the Food and Drug Administration as its commissioner, you'll be in charge of steering the agency responsible for the safety and effectiveness of our nation's medical products and protecting our country's food supply. This is a huge job. The FDA affects nearly every single American almost every day and regulates about a quarter of all of our consumer spending in the United States, over $4 trillion annually. It's responsible for product areas as diverse as prescription drugs for humans and animals, medical devices, biologics, cosmetics, over-the-counter medications, food, and tobacco. It's a vital mission, and we all want to make sure that the right person is leading it. The President's nominated you to do that job, and like every full-time nominee, you've been through an exhaustive process to make sure you don't have any conflicts of interest or other problems in your background. If you'll permit me, uh, I had the privilege of, of coming before this committee about 20 four or five years ago and sitting in the chair where you sat. It's not always a pleasant experience. One of the Democratic senators uh, said to me, uh, Governor Alex my family was sitting where yours is, said to me, uh, Governor Alexander, I've heard some very disturbing things about you, but I don't think I'll bring them up this morning. And Senator Kassebaum leaned over and said, well, Howard, I think you just did. <laughs> so, um, and then he held me up for three months. I don't expect that would be happening with you because like every full-time nominee, you've been through an exhaustive process to make sure of the conflicts of interest, as I said. Before the President announced your nomination, there was an extensive vetting process by the White House and the FBI. You submitted paperwork to the Office of Government Ethics. That's been carefully reviewed, including your financial information. They found several recusals, which you've committed to do, so there wouldn't be any remaining conflicts of interest that would prevent you from doing your job in the opinion of the Office of Government Ethics. The form you submitted is public. It includes every source of income over $200 and every asset worth more than $1,000 and every potential conflict that the Office of Government Ethics determined would require a recusal. I'm going through this so people will know that, it, that, that nominees such as yourself do this. You've answered 37 pages of questions from our committee including some confidential questions on financial information. You've responded to written follow-up questions. Your responses included over 3,000 pages of articles and lectures that my staff reviewed and that any member of the committee may review. You were nominated on September 17. Uh, our committee staff has spent two months carefully reviewing everything you submitted, and my staff tells me that they haven't found anything that would call into doubt your ability to lead the FDA fairly and impartially. You come here with impressive qualifications, a leading cardiologist, professor at one of the nation's top medical schools. You're an expert on clinical research, and you've been recognized as, a, as an author of medical publications. You've had some experience managing large organizations, and you've been the founding director of Duke's Clinical Research Institute. I'm sure Senator Burr will go into some detail about your background when he has a chance to introduce you in a few minutes. You've conducted a score of important clinical trials. That's important to me because I think it helps to have people in government who actually know what they're talking about but because of the experience that they've had before. So you understand how research gets done in the real world. I'm eager to hear your priorities about how you intend to manage such a large and diverse organization. I'd like to hear what you'll be able to do to ensure that affordable drugs are available to American patients. I, I hope you'll agree that drugs are, that your job is to see that drugs are safe and effective, uh, but the FDA can help market lower drug prices by approving generic drugs and other products as quickly as it possibly can so there's more choice and competition in the market. Approval times have gotten worse instead of better. I'll be asking you about that and what you intend to do about it. Second, there's never been a more exciting time to lead the agency. We know more about biology and medicine than ever before. 
and that's not likely to stop anytime soon in the advancement of regenerative cell therapies, 3D printing, the President's Precision Medicine Initiative. Your job, if confirmed, will to be to make sure that the FDA's regulation is appropriate. Too much regulation could reduce investments. Too little could, could make it difficult for drugs to be safe and effective. There's much work to be done. Sometimes it takes a decade to develop a drug. Sometimes it takes billions of dollars, literally. In this committee, we're working together in a bipartisan way to help get safe, cutting-edge drugs, medical devices, and treatments into American medicine cabinets and doctor's offices more quickly, and we hope to move that soon. We're looking forward to hearing what you believe needs to be done to build the FDA's capacity and to fix the impact of its regulations so that the FDA is a partner in innovation and not a barrier. I thank you and I look forward to hearing your testimony on these important issues. Senator Murray. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to all of our colleagues for being here.